My name is Lisa, and this is Happy Scrappy Life. It's a podcast about knitting, crochet, mini skeins, scrappy projects, and life in general. Today, I have a little co-host. I'm not sure how long he'll be here. I, we just got back from the groomers. He had his nails clipped, and I just hated to put him back in his cage so quick. So, I'm going to let him stay out, and we'll see how it goes. His name is Buddy. I think he just saw himself on the camera. That's adorable. His name is Buddy, and he is a teddy bear. Is the type of breed that he is. <laughs> he is half Bichon Frise and half Shih Tzu. He's a puppy. He was born in, I think, February. We got him on Mother's Day. He was my Mother's Day present from my husband. He's the best puppy in the world. He's so good. He's housebroke. He loves me so much. He takes care of me if I cry or if I'm sad. He's all lovey and cuddly with me, but yet he loves to play with my husband. He's just the perfect puppy. And he's completely hypoallergenic, so he doesn't get my allergies going at all, which is wonderful. So I'm going to put him up here on the couch. And we'll see how he does. Hopefully he does good. Maybe he'll just stay right back there in the background. Lay down, buddy. So, I wanted to touch base with you guys. I don't know how long this podcast will be. Probably not as long as some of the others. But I wanted to touch base. Tomorrow we leave to go to Ashley's for Thanksgiving. Um, Tom and I are going. My parents will be there too. And we will be there for almost a week. And then... I'm leaving from Indiana. She lives in Indiana. I'm leaving from Indiana and going with my parents down to Florida for almost a week. And Tom and Buddy will drive back here to our house. So I am super excited, but I didn't know because of Thanksgiving and because of me being away and everything, how I would, if I would podcast again and, and when I would. So I just kind of wanted to say hi for a minute. Plus, I have an F.O. <laughs> Yay! Party time! I actually have an FO that I wanted to show everybody, and I wanted to show you. I have lots of acquisitions, which has been super fun, and I have all of my knitting planned for my trip. Since I'll be gone for about two weeks, I'll have tons of knitting time, and my amazing, wonderful, fantastic husband has said that he doesn't want me to take any minis with me. He wants me to just relax and enjoy our trip and then enjoy my own trip to Florida and not worry about minis. While I'm in Florida, he said he is gonna work on minis here. So he's gonna take on a little bit of the responsibility this month, which is just amazing, and let me chill and relax and have a great vacation. So I'm very blessed to have him. I'm very blessed to have his help. So that means lots of knitting time, which means I should be able to finish things or at least get a good jump on things. But before we get into all of that stuff, this is going to be tricky, but he's right here on my lap again with a toy that he really, really wants me to throw. <laughs> but before we get into any of my current things that I'm planning on taking with me, I thought that I would just take a minute and show you my finished object. Yes, you heard that correctly. I have a finished object. As a matter of fact, there's actually two of them. It's my socks. If you follow me on Instagram or if you're a friend on Facebook or in any of the knitting groups, you've probably seen them. But I wanted to share here just in case you didn't. Ta-da! Whoop, there's a piece of fuzz on them. <laughs> Ta-da! Two socks. Completely scrappy. Happy scrappy socks. These are using, we're using my Cuero, I think that's how you say it, self-striping minis from a swapless swap a few months ago. I actually had leftover minis from making this. I had leftover yarn, so I made up some more minis, and I put them in the Etsy shop, which I will link to in the show notes, which will be on Ravelry and on my blog, but it's Happy Scrappy Life on Etsy, and I had some sets of mini skeins left over. I was able to make mini skeins. I think there's maybe two or three sets in the shop. So if you would like to make yourself some Cuero self-striping scrappy socks, you could take part in our cow and you can buy the minis on my blog or on my Etsy shop. So I did them cuff down. I made a nice long cuff. 
um, basically about as long as my finger, which is what I like to do. And then a long leg, I did a heel flop and gusset. First time for that, heel turn, and then a foot. And then I did a star or spiral, I'm not sure which. See how there's um, decreases all the way around? And then you just pull your yarn through at the end. I tried them on, and we'll talk about fit in a minute. But, I mean, they fit. I think I'm going to love the heel flop and gusset part of this. The gauge and, and that part is the part that's, that I'm not 100% sure on right yet. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, they're a little bit snug. But I really like the heel flap and gusset. But I can wear them. I'm definitely taking them with me to Ashley's house. It's going to be cold while we're there. So I'm going to want my hand knit socks for sure. So there they are. It's been a while since I've had a finished object. I haven't had one on here yet and I think we're on episode six now <laughs> so there you go but I have one today so that's awesome so those are my socks so let's talk a little bit about gauge so I'm a tight knitter I know I'm a tight knitter um it's loosened my gauge has loosened up a little bit as I've knit but I'm a tight knitter. I don't intend to be, but I just am. And I've always knit my socks 64 stitches around. This is just what I've always done. That's what everyone says. They do 64 stitches. A lot of people say that on podcasts and whatnot. Um, and then they do 72 for a man. So I've just done 64. And I was using a US2 needle for quite a while. Those Christmas socks I showed last time, Those a lot of those were on twos. And then... I, Everyone else was talking about using ones or even zeros. Well, I knew with how tight I knit, that would just be way too tight. But I did go down to a US one, which is what, or a one and a half, excuse me, which is what I knit these on. And I've knit others on. And when I put them on, they're very tight around my feet, a tight around the ankle, the leg, my foot. And I have a little bit wide feet. I wear an eight and a half, but my feet are, are wide across, high instep and everything. So I felt frustrated when I finished these socks. I think I'm going to love the heel flap and gusset, but I didn't know what I thought about the tightness of them. I just feel like I'm, I can't get to a good recipe, a good sock recipe. So I did a bunch of research. Um, that evening after my husband went to bed, when he came home, I grumbled and grumbled about them. And, and he, of course, was saying how pretty they were and he thought they were great, but I was frustrated. So that evening after we'd had time together and all and he went to bed, I got to researching on the internet. And I did a lot of reading on blogs and on a couple different books that I have. And one book, well, first of all, a lot of patterns that I found, um, either basic recipe type patterns. <laughs> you can see Buddy's head. He's still right here on my lap. Um, basic like sock recipe type patterns and then actual pattern four socks are um, they tell you that that you should probably get a gauge of seven to eight stitches per inch on your socks then I found a book called getting started knitting socks um, I actually had the book I just hadn't really ever looked at it and it's by Ann Budd and in that book she has a wonderful thing where she does sort of like recipes for different gauge so I don't remember how big the gauge goes up. Maybe five, five stitches per inch, six stitches per inch, seven stitches per inch, and eight stitches per inch, I think. I'm not sure. I know eight's the highest. And then she tells you numbers, and it's a cuff down, heel flap, and gusset, which is what I really want to start knitting um, more consistently. I think the heel is going to fit better. So she tells you how to do it um, with the numbers for those gauges. Well, I was thinking, okay, I really think I'm getting a lot more than eight stitches per inch. And that was the highest her book even goes. And every recipe or pattern I could find on Ravelry, a lot of them that I found were either seven or eight stitches per inch. So I thought I'm gonna measure my gauge on some of these socks. So I had some that were these that I had finished and then I had others that were on the needles that were on one and a halfs. And then I also had some that were on twos. And so I measured the gauge 
on all those socks. And on the one and a half needles, US one and a half, which I don't know what the millimeter is, I'm getting nine and a half stitches to the inch. And then on the US two needles, I'm getting nine stitches to the inch. So I'm nowhere near seven or eight stitches to the inch. And I'm knitting 64 st stitch needle or socks, 64 stitches around. So no wonder they're so tight on me because my gauge is so much tighter than it's making the socks so much tighter. I need to do bigger than that. So I got the idea. I looked at her book at Ann Bud's Getting Started Knitting Socks and I looked at her eight stitches per inch. Now in order to get eight stitches per inch, I'm guessing I'd have to go up to about a three or so needle. And I just worry that the fabric is gonna be way too loose. But I'm gonna kind of experiment. So what I'm doing right now, which I'll show you in some socks that I have started, I just started, um, I'm gonna use, for Tom I'm gonna use the US two, and for me I'm gonna use the US one and a half. And I'm gonna do the highest number, the biggest number in her book um, for the eight stitches per inch. She gives different adult, small adult, medium, adult, large, maybe even children's, I'm not sure. And the adult large is for a women's, um, I don't remember, but for a men's size shoe. Um, Tom wears a 10 and a half, and I wear a men's, 10 and a half men's, and I wear an eight and a half women. So I would do, for the length part of it, I'm gonna do the second number down for me, and I'm gonna do the biggest number for him. But for the number around, for foot circumference, um, it says to measure your foot in whatever your foot measurement is. So mine is nine and three quarters, which was the biggest size in her book. And then Tom's is a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to do the, the biggest size for both of us. So we'll see. So the cast on number for that biggest size is 76. So 76 stitches per inch, in, or I'm sorry, 76 stitches cast on instead of 64 that I've been doing for myself. So it's experiment time, we're gonna experiment. So in the process of all of this talking about socks and knitting socks and not knowing what to do, my husband, a wonderful man that he is, said that he really, really wants me to knit socks, which I had started a pair for him. He had picked out the yarn and I had started them and I was, that was when I was doing toe up and I would only gotten maybe, maybe that far. And when are you going to finish those? When are you going to finish those? He kept saying, well, I never had gone to him and now all of this changing that I'm wanting to do. And so I asked him, or I said to him, what about if I knit these socks for you, but we switch them around and I try this experiment and do this new way, which he was fine with, whatever. So he decided on Saturday was when we finally were talking a lot about all of this. On Saturday morning, he said he really wanted me to knit these socks and could I just have them finished when we go to Ashley's? Well, that was on Saturday. We go to Ashley's tomorrow, which is Tuesday. There's no way that I could have done that. I said jokingly, sure, but that means I'm gonna have to sit and knit all day Saturday, all day Sunday, all day Monday, and Tuesday morning before we leave. And we won't get to have any time together, and I won't be able to do any work or any packing or anything. Just knit, knit, knit. Well, he didn't like that. He didn't care about the work. He'd do the work, but he wanted to have time with me and be all cuddled up and lovey so that wasn't gonna happen so the deal is I'm gonna I started them and I'll make show you in a minute I'm making progress on them but I told him I didn't think that I could ever get them done before we went to Ashley's but that I would take them with me and I would knit on them at her house a bunch and maybe I can finish them while we're there before I leave for Florida so and we're, we what we decided to do was ankle socks I'm gonna do ankle socks for both of us and try this whole experiment with these numbers see if we can get a go-to sock recipe for each of us. If we can, which would be fantastic, then I can just knit socks for me and I think he'll probably love them and want me to knit him lots too. We'll have the numbers down and I can just go and go. I can plug in patterns for the legs if I want. We could do the legs different lengths. So I'm excited about this. So I wanted to show you, especially because hopefully I'll make lots of progress while I'm gone. So his pair the yarn that he had picked out is from Teeny Button Studio. And this is the yarn. It's kind of blues and gray or tannish gray color. 
and it's called wrought iron and I made them into two cakes like I always do because I knit on magic loop two at a time and here's my progress so far so he wears athletic little the white ankle type athletic socks all the time so we just measured those we measured the cuff we measured below it and the cuff the ribbed part was two inches on those socks and then an inch of straight knitting and then the heel so that's what we're going to do for these and so this is 76 stitches and I just feel like it just makes more sense it just looks better look at the difference in this it's insane it's crazy this is like see it's crazy so it's no wonder these are so tight on me so so we I started the cuff I knit the cuff and of course I've got two of them here the other one's just flopping down so it's my little marker to keep me knowing where I'm at I knit the two inches in the cuff and then I knit one inch straight and then last night I got sleepy so I didn't do very much but I knit started the heel flap so I don't know if you can kind of see I just have a teeny bit of a heel flap right now but I'm doing both of them at the same time so I'm just going all the way across and across and across and across once I am ready to do the actual heel turn I'll do the first sock turn that heel pick up gussets on the one side turn this heel pick up gussets and go around but so I'm making progress I don't know we leave tomorrow and with podcast I really wanted to podcast today getting it uploaded and all and then of course all the packing for basically two weeks worth of a vacation which is kind of overwhelming to think about packing for all that um, I don't know how much time I'll get to work on them tonight but tomorrow the drive to Ashley's house is four hours so <coughs> excuse me grab myself a drink I've got some lemonade here So the trip's four hours one way. So I'll get some knitting time there. And then, of course, on the way to Florida, hopefully I've finished these by then. But on the way to Florida, it's like 15 or 16 hour drive. My dad will drive. So I'll have all of that time for knitting. So that's why I have all these projects. But these are his socks. And we'll see where I get. I'm hoping to get the heel flap done and the gussets and everything and then maybe be able to work down the foot relatively quickly. So this is his pair. And then for me, same thing, I wanna figure out a recipe and get my numbers down the way I want them, the way that fits well. So for me, I decided to do Christmas. So I cast on the ribbon candy yarn from Artistic Yarn by Abby. I love her yarn, I just think it's wonderful. And by the way, in Sock Yarn Swappers, um, the next swaps, all of November's have been out, Your or October's have been out. We're working on November's right now. They'll go out by December 15th. Those are what Tom's gonna finish up for me while I'm on vacation. But um, the ones posted now for December, two of those swaps are Artistic Yarn by Abby. She is a wonderful self-striping dyer. And her 40 yard swap is full. We've got some alternates if you'd like to be an alternate. But then the 20 yard swap still has a few spots. And then I believe Lavender Loon is another one that we have for December. Her yarn's gorgeous too, check her out. And then over in the Crazy Sock Lady, we have a Truly Hooked swap. And there's lots of spots in that too. So I'll put links to everything in the show notes, but if you're looking for some minis, check them out. But this yarn is from Artistic Yarn by Abby. That's what got me off on that. And it's called Ribbon Candy. And I love the fun Christmassy colors. So I am not very far at all on these. I literally just cast on the cuff. Cuffs. So we'll see. Like I've only done a few rounds. I just knew casting them on two at a time is a little hairy, cuff down. And so I wanted to get them cast on and ready to go so that I can work on the ribbing and get myself going on these. So I'm gonna do ankle socks for these two. I wear some ankle socks, but I really like my hand knit socks long, but I don't wanna put a ton of knitting in it for them to end up not fitting correctly. So I thought I'd do ankle socks, figure out the numbers, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully when you see me again, I'll have Tom's finished and a lot of work done on mine. 
So those are some of the knitting projects I'm going to take with me on my trip. And then I thought I would take a crochet project because of our cow that we've got going on. I forgot to mention those at the beginning. We've got two cows going on right now. One is the Crazy Happy Crochet Along that I'm doing along with Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. She has a thread in her group and then I have a thread over in our group. They're chatter threads and basically just crochet. That's it. They end January 31st and you can just crochet and crochet and crochet. Don't have to finish an object, just comment or chatter along in the chatter thread, and that's where I will draw all the prizes from. Each of us have a thread. The other cow we have going on is the Happy Scrappy Socks, which perfectly wonderful entry into that. Of course, I can't enter, but this would be a wonderful entry into that. Those are just scrappy socks. We've already got a whole bunch of FOs, which I'm shocked by. You guys are so fast and awesome. We have both an FO thread and a chatter thread for that. And that one ends January 31st as well. So head on over and check them out. You have to be a member of either of our group in order to win prizes for either cow. But check them out. So I thought I would take some crochet with me. My mom is a crocheter and I think she would enjoy seeing this project and, and watching me do it. Plus I want to get it done. It's a baby blanket for my nephew and his wife. She's due in March. I'm sure there'll be baby showers probably the first of the year. So I've made a little progress. I don't think I moved. No, I didn't. I don't think I moved my marker. So I'm not exactly sure where I was last time. I may not have made much progress. But it's a corner to corner crochet afghan. Love it. It's just fun. I'm making it using cotton yarn. And I'm going to do grays, white, gray, and then this fun lime green color, and then gray, white, gray, back down, decrease back down. I don't think I moved this marker. I can't remember where I was last time, so I have to move it up here after we finish talking. But it's coming along. I hope to make a lot of progress on this on the trip. It's um, a, such a quick you know how fast crochet is. And so that's a good thing. So that's another project I'm taking with me. Corner to corner crochet afghan baby blanket. And then the final project I'm taking, these two blankets will be projects I'll work on in the car and at Ashley's maybe, and then like in the hotel and stuff. The socks I'll probably take on the airplane on the way home. Um, a blanket would be too big and so it'll be in my luggage that gets checked, but I'll take my socks on the airplane which as I'm saying that in my head I'm thinking if my bag got lost and I lost these projects that would be so sad so we'll say a prayer that that does not happen so the other project that I'm going to take is one of my bits and bobs blankets love this project so much love it love it love it love it love it love it if you haven't bought the, the pattern I would tell you recommend highly go buy the pattern it's such a fun project and it's a great way to use up your scraps or mini skeins so I just only knit like a line or two a row or two since we talked last I haven't done very much but <clears throat> hopefully I will on the in the car it's fast it's mindless but I have been busy so what you use, do with this is you use a neutral yarn, which I'm using gray, which I have these two grays, um, knit picks, and then I think this is leading men fiber or it's a whole cake of it. I don't know if I'll need more than that. If I do, then I'll just buy more, just some kind of gray fingering weight yarn. But then I have spent, this is the magic knot ball that I've been using, that I'm using right now. And I'm doing it all pinks and purples. She found out she's having a girl, which is so exciting. So I'm doing it all pinks and purples. But even though I didn't work much on the project, I have spent a lot of time making magic knot balls for this project. So here's one, two, three, four, And this five. Wow. That is awesome. So I have five magic knot balls here. Some of them are small, of course. They're not real big. But 
that's okay. So I don't know. I may have enough here right now to do the whole project because it's just a baby blanket. If not, I've got lots of minis and I'll keep getting lots of minis with all the swaps. Of course, I can buy more gray yarn if I have to or maybe trade with somebody or something. So this is my bits and bobs, the smaller one that I'm making for a baby blanket. It's still a nice size though. It's just so squishy. I just love this pattern. Hopefully you can really see that stitch. It's just awesome. It looks to me like what I think brioche looks like when I see people post about brioche. Um, but it just is so much easier. It's just, you're just, you're only knitting the, but it's the way you do your stitches or whatever. So that is all of the knitting projects I'm going to take with, or the yarn projects I'm going to take with me, my knitting and my crochet. So hopefully I make lots of good progress. I'm not sure when I'll record again. Um, I want to try to get some footage of my parents and Ashley and, and my nieces and nephews and my brothers and their wives down in Florida. But I don't know when I'll actually record again. We'll see how I'm doing and how I'm feeling. But hopefully you'll see some progress on all of those. Um, another thing I meant to mention, and then I want to show you some acquisitions that I got. Um, over in the Gravelry group, I have a giveaway going on right now for Party of Five Crafts, I'm pretty sure is the name of it. And it's a project bag, and it's a fantastic project bag. Matter of fact, she sent me one too, and I'm probably going to put some of my projects in one of those, in that one of my projects in that bag to take with me because it's such an awesome bag. It's a Christmassy bag. So, nope, it's not a Christmassy bag. I'm getting confused. I've got this other one here I want to show you. It's chickens knitting. That's right. So, that'll be super fun. But we still have a giveaway going. I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it up for a little bit longer. I didn't think to pull. I kind of, this was a spur of the moment recording. And I've got a lot of work and stuff I need to do to get ready for our trip. So I just wanted to get on here, get an episode up, and we will pull for that next time. Whenever I record again, we'll pull. So next, I want to talk about acquisitions. So the acquisitions this time are super fun because I have taken part in a thing that was going on. It's still kind of going on on Instagram called Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. Have you been doing this? It's so fun. So you post a little graphic on Instagram, you use the hashtag, and you say what your yarn wish is. And then somebody grants it, and then you grant someone's wish, and then, well actually the first step is you grant a wish, then you post a wish, and then you grant a wish, and so on. It's so fun. So I've granted lots of wishes. Lots of people are getting mini skeins headed out in the mail. We actually packaged them all up this weekend and took them yesterday. So you should be getting them this week. And I've had some wishes granted. I have some that are still on their way to me and I have some that arrived already. So I wanted to share those with you. So my friend Rhonda on Instagram, I don't remember what her Instagram name is, but her real name is Rhonda sent me some progress keepers. I said that I needed lots more progress keepers to show my progress for all of you here on the podcast. And she sent me a wonderful big uh, safety pin with some stitch markers hanging off of it, or progress keepers. So we've got, let's see if I can do this, a shell and a flower. This is very difficult to do. Here, let's see if we can do it this way. And a flower and a paw print measuring spoons which I think is so cute and a measuring cup get that turned around and a dragonfly and a sand dollar so nice so that was one of my wishes that I got granted. Where's some progress keepers? Thank you so much, Rhonda. They're wonderful. She included some fun teas as well. And then another one that I got filled was a Christmas bag. I said that I really wish that I could have more Christmas bags. I have some and I wanted more to put all my projects in. And Laura from Knit for Brains, here's her card. 
They have a podcast on YouTube, and they also have an Etsy shop called Knit for Brains. She sent me this wonderful little DPN holder with Santa and an awesome project bag. Nice big project bag. It's red inside. Santa's on the front. It's got a handle on it. So something for sure will be going in this bag for my trip. So go check out their shop, Knit for Brains. They've got great project bags on there, Christmas and regular ones. And that was another one of my wish granted. And then the last one that I've received so far is from Sylvia. And I said that I wished I could have some more fun self-striping yarn. I love knitting with self-striping yarn. And I have some, and I'm always looking for more. So she surprised me and sent me some string theory. It's blues and like a lighter blue and browns. It's beautiful. And it is sport weight, not fingering weight. Which means I could go up even a little higher, figure out my numbers for that. So when I got this in the mail, my husband was here, of course, and we opened it up and he immediately said, those would make great socks for me, baby. So I'm probably going to be knitting him socks with this yarn. So thank you so much, Sylvia and Laura and Rhonda. It's been so fun getting wishes filled and even more fun granting wishes. And if you haven't done Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted on Instagram, I recommend go check it out. It warms your heart to fill other people's wishes, and it's fun to get your own filled. So, that's pretty much it. This is a short episode. I just wanted to get up and talk a little bit about uh, the projects I'm going to take with me and show you my FO. And I just wanted to wish everyone here in the U.S. a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful time. I'm sure looking forward to my trip. I'm so excited about being with Ashley. I'm so proud of her. She's hosting Tom and I and my parents at her house for Thanksgiving. We'll be there from Tuesday night all the way through Sunday. And she's just, she's making lots of fun plans. She's done all the shopping. We tried to give her money to help pay for things and she did not want that at all. I'm an adult mom. I can do it. So she's so responsible and I'm just so proud of her. I can't wait to go visit her and be with her and Izzy and my parents and, and Tom and Buddy. We're going to have a great time. And then, of course, I'm thrilled about going to Florida. It's supposed to be a little warmer down there, so that'll be nice. It'll be nice to see my brothers and everybody. I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm going to miss Tom like crazy. This weekend, I had a couple tear times where I'm going to, just, I'm going to miss him. He's wonderful. I wish he could just go with me to Florida. But he'll be here working hard making minis, which is so awesome. So I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful week, a wonderful Thanksgiving. And think about me in Florida. I'll be having a great time. And I hopefully will get back to you. Maybe I'll do a little short one like this one night from the hotel. I don't know. We'll see. I'm sure going to miss my husband. And I'm going to miss this puppy dog. i got to show you real fast. There he is. Sound asleep. He's such a good puppy dog. It's a good sign. I was thinking that I just had to always put him in his crate. That he couldn't be good for me. But he is being so good for me. So, that's it. I'm signing off. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And enjoy your scrappy, scrappy life. Bye, everybody.